Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Now, if you ever write a large corn shell program, this is what may happen. You may find that you're writing the same group of code over and over again throughout your program. For example, if you have code to write to a log file, you might end up typing that same code in, say, 10, 20, 30 times throughout your program, depending on how many times you want to update the log file while you're inside of your program. Now, if you want to update that code, you have to go to every single occurrence of it and make the same exact change. Well, you may make a mistake. I make mistakes. And you may forget one. And if you expand your code out, if you have to add to your program, and you decide you want to write to the log file again in that new portion of code, then you have to type in all that code all over again. So instead of having code, the same code, all over the place in your program, this is what Corn Shell allows you to do. You take the code, write it once, and associate a name with that group of code, with that block of code. And any time you want to execute that block of code, you just type in the name that you gave it. So let's take a look at how that works. We are introducing functions. Instead of writing repeated code over and over again, put it in a function. Also, anytime you need to update the code, you only have to update it in one location, not many. Okay. Let's review how we define a variable. We have a variable name, and we have a value that gets associated with the variable name, and we have the equal sign in between. Now this right here, it's just the definition of the variable. If we want to actually access it, we put a dollar sign in front of it. What this says is print var is and then it sees the dollar sign var, so it goes here, grabs the value, and plops it down right here. Now we're going to do something similar with our function, with our block of code. We are going to define a name, and that name is going to be equivalent to a bunch of corn shell commands. This is how we do it. We say function, and then this is the name of our function. This is the name of our block of code. And anything between the open curly brace and the closed curly brace is what becomes equivalent to the name of the function. So in this case, f1 is equivalent to print in function print high. Whenever corn shell sees an F1 in this program, it is going to go right here and execute these two lines of code, and then return to where it came from. Now the one thing I want you to see here is that this is just the definition of F1. This code does not actually get executed at this point. It only gets executed when we call F1, when you see an F1 with inside of your corn shell program. Also, you can only call a function after you have defined it. So you can only use F1 from this point on. If you tried typing F1 above this, corn shell wouldn't be happy. So let's look, take a look at how you would actually call this function. It's pretty easy. You just type F1. And what you can think of is whenever you see F1, that this code right here basically gets substituted right here. It's not exactly what happens, but 
it's a convenient way to think of things. From what I understand, what actually happens is every time it sees F1, it goes up here, executes these two lines of code, and then returns to right after where F1 is. But if it makes your life easier, you're more than welcome to think that these two print statements get plopped in right here. So when we see F1, we're going to execute these two lines of code, and then we're going to come back right here, and there's nothing left on this line, so it doesn't do anything else for that line. Then it does this print statement, and then it goes back to F1, which says execute these two lines of code, come back here, and the next thing we do is this print statement, and then we do F1 again, which is just executing this code, and we come back here, and then we go to this print statement again, the last print statement, excuse me. So let's actually run this and see what happens. First, we just had our print statement involving our variable var. And the next thing we did was we called f1 after we defined it. And f1 said in f1, inside of f1, print in function and print high. Afterward, as you can see, f1, and then we have our first print statement, print1, then we called f1 again, then we had our second print statement, and we called f1 again, and we had our third print statement. And, as you can see, that is exactly what happened. This code right here is the same in all three occurrences. Now I know you're saying it's only two lines of code, what's the big deal? Well, sometimes the code that you write, that gets repeated maybe 20 or 30 lines long. By defining a function, you make your code a lot shorter. It makes it a lot easier to read. You only need to update your code in one place if you ever do need to update things. Drastically reduces the chances of you making a mistake. And it's far quicker to change and update. And if you have to add new code, instead of having to add the same 20 to 30 lines, you only have to add a function name. So once again, to define a function, you use the word function, and this is a corn shell command. You give it a function name, in this case we said f1, and then you use an open curly brace and a closed curly brace, and you put whatever commands you want to inside of those, and that becomes equivalent to f1. And when you want to call f1, when you want to execute these two lines of code right here, just type in f1 anywhere in your program after you define the function. In the next lesson, we will get a little fancier with functions.